Sabbath, everyone. And as we can see from the screen, this is what we'll be looking at today, Ezekiel chapter 9, the judgment for the living. And uh, we'll just be reading the entire chapter as our prayer taught. And it reads as follows. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slain them that I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, O oh Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Now sometimes, when we read the things that are chronicled in the word of God, we can forget, or sometimes because of the mundane things of life, the buying and selling, the getting and giving, we can put these things off ourselves and saying, the Lord had forsaken the earth, and we live as though that he did not see. But actually, the Lord sees everything we do, and everything we think, and everything we say. And if we could see an angel standing beside us day by day, recording everything we say, our words might be different oftentimes. But because we don't see, we don't believe that the Lord is here with us. But we too sometimes believe that the Lord has forsaken the earth. So this study that we're about to embark on today is a timely reminder that the Lord has not forsaken the earth and that he sees. And if there's ever a people on the earth that should know that the Lord sees, it should be us. Amen. So on that note, we're going to kneel with Sister Denita. She has the mic. She don't, you don't? Oh, it's right here. And you can keep it to help, too, with the reading. Our Father and our God, we kneel before thee at the beginning of this study that we are about to receive. We pray that each heart here will be blessed and touched and that each heart listening and in the sound of its voice might be blessed with the truths that are going to be presented at this time. We thank you so much for continuing to encourage and strengthen us and continuing to warn us and to give us admonitions. We pray that they will all be received as they ought be, for Christ's sake, amen.
No. I want to start with this statement. It states here, the righteous perish it, and no man lay it to heart. The merciful men are taken away, and none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. And that's Isaiah 57, verse 1. The comment, in regard to the specific event in question, if the questioner will open his Esrod, volume 1, and carefully restudy page 219, he will clearly see that the context of the statement, those who cannot undergo the trial are laid in their graves, requires that it, will, it be fulfilled before Ezekiel 9. So just before Ezekiel 9 occurs, or as we're getting closer and closer to Ezekiel 9, the Lord will undertake to put some of his people to sleep. So whatever will happen leading up to Ezekiel 9, the Lord sees that some of his people will not be able to endure it. And in order to save them from the trials of the days that we'll be living in then, in his mercy, he puts them to sleep. So as we see, fellow saints are being laid to rest without no apparent reason, and one minute they seem healthy, and the next minute they're dead. We know, too, that the Lord has promised that he's going to do this. So it is not that Ezekiel 9 is far off. And so not only Ezekiel 9 itself, but the events leading up to Ezekiel 9 will be very bad. So this is one of the signs that the Lord has given us that we know Ezekiel 9 is near when we see the saints are dying or the Lord is putting them to rest. And so if we have believed that the Lord has forsaken the earth, we will not see what the Lord is doing because quite a bit of the believers have died in the, in the past few years and more will die. Not because the Lord is unmerciful, but because he's merciful. No. Why will Ezekiel 9 take place? Who will execute Ezekiel 9? Men or angels? Where will the work of Ezekiel 9 start or begin? Will children be affected by Ezekiel 9? And the fifth point that we will be looking at, will the destructive work of Ezekiel 9 be spiritual or a literal one? So those are the points that we're going to be looking at. And the first point, why would a merciful God execute Ezekiel 9? Now, in volume 5, Testimonies for the Church, inspiration states the following. The abominations, now when you look at these two words, especially the second word, abominations, several things are described in the Bible as being abominable. Bestiality, eating swine, people going with this people of the same sex. The Bible says, he that take it, he that turn it away is ear from ear in the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So inspiration states, the abominations for which the faithful ones were sighing and crying, were all that could be discerned by finite eyes, but by far the worst sins, worse sins than anything outlined in the Bible as abominable. Those which provoke the jealousy of the pure God, the pure and holy God, were unrevealed. So here God is saying, whatever we can see that's going on in the world, as abominable as we can think about abomination, Inspiration is saying people are in the church practicing sins that we do not know of. And we will never know of unless he steps in. Inspiration continues. The great searcher of hearts know it every sin committed in secret by the workers of iniquity. These persons come to feel secure in their deceptions and because of his long suffering say that the Lord see it not, and then act as though he had forsaken the earth. But he will detect their hypocrisy and will open before others those sins which they were so careful to hide. So you see what the Lord said he's going to do. 
he is going to reveal the sins. And he's going to reveal it before they die in Ezekiel 9. Inspiration continues. <clears throat> Child guidance. And we're still on the why. Many cases have been presented before me. And as I have had a view of their inner lives, my soul has been sick and disgusted with the rotten heartedness of human beings who profess godliness and talk of translation to heaven. I have frequently asked myself, whom can I trust? Who is free from iniquity? I'm filled with horror as the condition of families professing present truth is open before me. The profligacy of youth and even children is almost incredible. Parents do not know the secret vice, that secret vice is destroying and defacing the image of God in their children. The sins which characterize the sodomites exist among them. And we know why the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And inspiration is saying the people are talking about translation to heaven. And here inspiration brings out the real character of these people that talk the talk, but they're not walking the walk. So much so, inspiration states that the parents do not know that secret vice is destroying and defacing the image of God. No. So inspiration is telling us why God has to execute Ezekiel 9. Not one particle, not even a dust of sodomitish impurity will escape the wrath of God at the execution of the judgment. Those who do not repent of and forsake all uncleanness will fall with the wicked. So the door is open for repentance and turning away. So here inspiration makes it known that not even a particle of sin will go into the kingdom. And if the Lord destroyed the Sodomites, if he destroyed the children of Israel, if he destroyed the people that was in Jericho, if he spared us and brought us in the kingdom, he would have to resurrect them and bring them too because they perish because of sin. And so, inspiration continues with the why. Church members need to fast and pray, striving earnestly to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Not one particle of sodomitish impurity will escape the wrath of God at the execution of the judgment. So people will go right up to the judgment and still practice in secret sin. Even while the Lord is saying, you can turn away now. Those who do not repent of and forsake all uncleanness will fall with the wicked. Those who become members of the royal family and form God's kingdom in the earth made new will be saints, not sinners. Isaiah 30 verse 1 through to 3 and verse 8 through to verse 16. So here inspiration is showing us why and that the door of mercy is still open today. Inspiration continues. The last great day is right upon us. Let all consider that Satan is now striving for the mastery of our souls. He is playing the game of life for your souls. Will there be sins committed by you on the very borders of the heavenly Canaan? Question. She continues. Oh, what revealings. The husband will know for the first time the deception and falsehood that have been practiced by the wife whom he thought innocent and pure. The wife for the first time will know the case of her husband and the relatives and friends will see how error and falsehood have, and corruption have been clustering about them. For the secrets of all hearts will stand revealed. The hour of judgment is almost here, long delayed by the goodness and mercy of God. So even now, people are living together and they don't know about each other. Total secrecy. And people will wait to the dead last minute to hold those secrets. And the Lord is saying, you can make you know. And inspiration continues. Why? Let the articles deal with the truths of the word of God. Given clear instruction in regarding to the saving truths for this time, the warning 
of the near approach of the judgments of God and the end of all things. So constantly inspiration said these things have to be kept before the people because as human beings we just tend to forget. We tend to put off what is coming. An inspiration in 18 manuscript release, page 370, paragraph 3, continues. Those who live in the last days should be circumspect in words and acts. Sobriety is more in accordance with our faith than levity. Those who realize the solemnity of the times in which we live will be among the number who bear about them a weight of the solemn influence. They are rich in good works, bearing the burden of souls, and by a holy example, faithfully represent Jesus Christ and win souls to accept Christ as their Savior. Ezekiel 9, verse 3 to verse 6, notice particularly that the sign and crying ones are alone marked. Those who engage in afflicting their souls before God are especially remembered of him, and the angel is bidden to place a mark upon them. Those are the sign and crying ones who alone will be remembered. And this is what Sister White said. I saw, not that she read or she dreamt. She said, I saw that the Lord was wetting his sword in heaven to cut them down. Oh, that every lukewarm professor could realize the clean work that God is about to make among his professed people. So while you have those practicing abominations, you also those have those who are probably not practicing abominations, but they are lukewarm, rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. The Lord said, they too will not be spared. So since Ezekiel 9 is going to take place, and the Lord tells us it's going to take place, and why he's going to do it, because of the wickedness that people are practicing, who will execute Ezekiel 9? And there seems to be a confusion among some people. Will it be men or angels? Because Ezekiel did describe seeing men talking to Christ. Inspiration says this. Testimonies to ministers. The angels of God who is bidden, holding back the winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor in any tree, until the servants of God should be sealed in their foreheads. The mighty angel is seen ascending from the east, our sunrise. This mightiest of angels has in his hand the seal of the living God. So here Sister White said, it is the mightiest of angels that have the responsibility to do the sealing. Not only to do the sealing, but to command also the other angels to hold the winds in check are not to do any slain until he has accomplished his work. And they listen. This mightiest of angels has in his right and the seal of the living God, or of him who alone can give life, who can inscribe upon the foreheads the mark or inscription, to whom shall be granted immortality, eternal life. It is the voice of this highest angel that had authority to command the four angels to keep in check the four winds until this work was performed and until he should give the summons to let them loose. So no, we cannot deceive this angel. We cannot pretend to deceive angels. And while, based on the first reason why the Lord executes Ezekiel 9, and we might be able to fool each other, we cannot fool the angel. And inspiration tells us, this is not any angel. This work is committed to a special angel. And inspiration says this, in going back to Ezekiel chapter 9, He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lie toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. So all six of the angels had slaughter weapons. But the difference is one has a slaughter weapon and a sealing instrument. So not only does he slay, but he seals first. After he accomplishes his work of sealing, he leads out with the slain and the others follow after. So all six slays, all of them slays. 
But the difference is only one has the responsibility of sealing. An inspiration in track number three, page 71, attests the following. The reason that the church is figuratively not Babylon is that it is called Jerusalem, Ezekiel 9, verse 4 and verse 8. And from among the good therein, the wicked or the tears are destroyed, taken out by the six men with slaughter weapons, Ezekiel 9, verse 6 through to verse 9. So all six slaves, all six. Then afterward, the good, the wheat, are gathered in the barn, while from the wicked in Babylon, the just, my people, are called out and gathered into the barn. Then the seven angels pour out the seven last plagues, and the remaining wicked are destroyed. Thus, in the first section of the harvest, the separation in the church, the wicked are destroyed by six men with slaughter weapons. All six of them slay. But the five has to follow the one that does the sealing work. And so the five follow the one. And so by this time, this is no secret, you know. When you have a church with over 23 million people and you start to have a destructive debt, this is nightly news across the world. And so, Inspiration says the following. There is not a thought about the world or the ungodly. Ezekiel 9 has nothing to do with them first. Not a thought about the world or the ungodly. When the marking or sealing is finished, the five men with the slaughter weapons begin with the ancient men which were before the house, meaning the guardians of the spiritual interests of the people. And the references are given there. So that's where they start first. And so, how long will it go on for? Inspiration will tell us. Thus, the silence of half an hour points forward to this great event for the church of God. Its fulfillment would bring us to the time of the harvest, or as it is called, the loud cry of the third angel's message, Revelation 18, the last message for the world. Thus, while the five men with slaughter weapons are taking away those represented by the tears within the church, there will be silence in heaven for about half an hour, seven days. So even on a Sabbath, Ezekiel 9 will be going on. And when you have destruction in the land, people always run to the church for refuge. And that will not be enough to spare the people. No more so than Solomon's brother could be spared by running, or Joab running in the chapel, the temple, anciently for rescue. Solomon said, cut him down right there. And so, when Ezekiel 9 starts, it will even continue on a Sabbath. For seven days, the angels will be built in planet Earth. And if we're not sealed by the time the slain starts, we who are here know we know. It is not like the people that are coming in at the tail end. We will be in trouble if we're not found covered by then. And so, inspiration makes the following statement. What about if we turn back from the message and walk away and we should go in the world? Today, would we fall under Ezekiel 9 and be saved amongst those in the world in the loud cry? Inspiration answers. Zephaniah 1 verse 6. And them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for him, comment, the backslider, and the indifferent, those who are unstable, and those who see no need of God, are to perish along with the tears. So the backslider, the indifferent, the unstable, and those who see no need of God are to perish along with the tears. Zephaniah 1 verse 7. All thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. For the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. He had bidden his guests. Comment. This long expected great. This is the long expected 
great and dreadful day of the Lord. Even those who turn back and are in the world having fun, the angels are going for them. So even if we should turn back from this truth, we're still in trouble. Because we would go out there and influence people to be lost. And so, inspiration makes it clear, he is not going to spare those that turn back. And by this, I don't believe the angels need to hide their presence from those that they're going for. And for seven days, they'll be going around the planet. And inspiration continues. The time of the harvest will fully determine the character of the two classes specified under the figure of the tears and the wheat. The work of separation is given to the angels of God and not committed into the hands of any man. Because you know what? Even if this was committed in the hands of man and you get to someone's house to do the work, when they finish talking to you, they might persuade you to change your mind. But not so with the angels. When the Lord tells them to go and do not pity, they do exactly as the Lord tells them to do. And the man reports back that I have done as thou has commanded me. And so, inspiration continues. When the destroying angel was to pass through Egypt, to destroy the firstborn of man and beast, Israel was commanded to gather their children and families into their houses with them, and then mark their doorpost with the blood, that the destroying angel might pass by their dwellings. And if they failed to go through with this process, there was no difference made between them and the Egyptians. And so the Lord, too, has told us what we need to do to be saved. It doesn't matter what we're doing even right now. The Lord says, today, if you will hear my voice. So mercy is still being offered. Mercy's door is open, and the Lord is still pleading with us. And Sister White continues, the destroying angel is soon to go for it again. Not to destroy the firstborn alone, but to slay utterly old and young, both men and women and little children who have not the mark. So, if Ezekiel 9 should start today, where do I stand? Where do we stand? Would we be saved? And we're not ready. And the Lord sees that we're not ready. But how long is it going to take us to get ready? The Lord sees in his mercy that we are just not ready. And inspiration continues. The time of the judgment is a most solemn period when the Lord gathers his own from among the tears. Those who have been members of the same family are separated. A mark is placed upon the righteous. Members of the very same family they live together, eat together, worship together, but they're separated and a mark is placed upon the righteous. And we're going to come back to the statement a bit later. No, since we see that it will be done by angels, the next question, where will the work of Ezekiel 9 start? Some have asked if it will start at Bashan. And we're going to look at that next. So we see why Ezekiel 9 will be executed. We see by whom it will be executed. And we're looking at now where will the Lord start the process. And this is what Ezekiel had said. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. So he draws near. This is something that he's personally involved in. This is something that he has taken upon himself to make sure that it is accomplished. 
And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. This man could be right here today, you know. He could be passing and looking at all of us and seeing if we're ready to be sealed. And once he seals us, he cannot take the seal back off because he does not make mistakes. And if he doesn't see that, that we're fit for the seal, he might pass back next week. And he passed back the other week until we're sealed or we're just not sealed. And the sealing means to be settled into the truth. Verse 5, And to the others he said in mine earring, Go ye after him to the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Inspiration. To his angels he gives commission to execute his judgment. Let ministers awake. Let them take in the situation. The work of judgment begins at the sanctuary. This is a church. But... Where in the church does it begin? Does it begin with us? Or does it begin in, with the leading men in the church? Will Ezekiel 9 take place here at Bashan? Will people die here? Inspiration continues. So both the sealing and the slaughter are in God's church, not in Babylon or in the world. It is only in Jerusalem and Judah, the house of Israel, church. Judah in Ezekiel 9 verse 9 refers to those in office. For Judah occupied the office of the Levites after the tribe of Levi was carried away. There is not a thought about the world or the ungodly. When the marking sealing is finished, the five men with slaughter weapons begin with the ancient men which were before the house meaning the guardians of the spiritual interests of the people. That's who they start with. That's where who they start with. And inspiration is going to continue. Angels keep a faithful record of every man's work. And as judgment passes upon the house of God, the sentence of each is recorded by his name, and the angel is commissioned to spare not the unfaithful servants, but to cut them down at the time of slaughter. Now, I'm going to read this particular verse and then go to the comment. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and his bride out of her closet. This is the reason for the solemn assembly. The Lord is coming to judgment and he has to come see a sanctified people. If we accomplish this, we cannot die in Ezekiel 9. Let me repeat. If we accomplish this, we cannot die in Ezekiel 9 because the Lord will come see a sanctified congregation. If we are evil, we are in trouble. Now inspiration continues. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, Assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. In this verse, as in Joel 2 verse 1, the command is given to blow the trumpet in Zion. This second trumpet, however, is not to announce the day of God, but to sanctify both a fast and the people, to call a solemn assembly, from which not one is to be excluded from the assembly. Anybody that's not at the solemn assembly, they're in trouble. Now, 
Sister Denita might have to hand over to you soon. I have five minutes till sunset. So I'm gonna break and hand over to you. You want to do that? No, or you want me to wait? Okay, I can wait. So now, here we see that a solemn assembly will be called. And all of us should know about the solemn assembly. Listen what inspiration says. The angel with the writer's inkhorn is to place a mark upon the foreheads of all who are separated from sin and sinners. This is a literal separation, you know. So if you are separated from sin and sinners, where do you separate yourself to? If you separate yourself from sin and sinners, you can't live in the same house, you know. You have separated yourself. And the destroying angel follows this angel. So wherever the saints separate themselves to, and let me go and show you this. If you look at Daniel chapter 2, this is a Seventh-day Adventist church throughout the world. This is it throughout the world. All the saints, when Ezekiel 9 occur, will be one place, one location. All God's people will be at the solemn assembly. Anybody that's not at the solemn assembly, they're going to die in Ezekiel 9. The stone comes from one place in this mountain. It is not some people over here, some up here, some over here, some here, some down here, and some here. He carries them out from one geographical location. This place, this is the one place that God's people live from. They're not scattered all over the mountain. When the cut occurs, it comes from one place in the mountain. And so when they separate themselves from sin and sinners, they have to be at this place. So now, if you don't deserve to be at this place, and the Lord says, friend, how came a sinner not having a wedding garment? That is a fearful thing, because this is where its chariot reside. And as none of God's people died in Goshen, when the Lord executed judgment then, so none of God's people who are faithful will die in Ezekiel 9 in his association. But the thing is that, will we cooperate with his association and be there then? Because you know what? As we get closer to the end and the complexities of the problems become more, so will the living the spirit of prophecy be more important. And if we're not obeying now, we're not go going to obey then. And the Lord is not going to play around and have us here farming church, playing, we listen, we don't want to listen. The Lord is going to have a, co a cohesive people that are together. And so the Lord is pleading with us now, or some way or the other, we are going to go through the gate. We turn over to Sister Denita. Shall we bow our heads? <clears throat> our gracious Father in heaven, we are truly grateful for your continuous guide and protective care over us as your people. To another Sabbath hours, you have seen us starting up a new week. We have been blessed with many different blessings, but the greatest is your presence among your people still, that we as individuals can be a part of such a great work at this time. Help us, each of us here who are bowing in thy presence, that we will be real to you as you have been real to us. Let us surrender all the baggages, every heavy weight that is besetting us, anything that is indifference in our lives, that is today is the day to hear your voice and implant it into our lives. We thank you for your manifestation that you have been using through your people to present such stirring message to our hearts. 
continue to lead out in the lives of your people and may we be the people that will come up higher and be a better people representing you in Jesus name amen okay when Ezekiel 9 occurs God's people are together you know they're in one place God only wants the stone that's all he wants and that's all you will get so when the saints separate from sin and sinners they're in one geographical place the place that the chariot is the place where the Lord orders the angels to do what they have to do and so the Lord inspiration continues it is those of Jacob that take root that make up the stone it is those of Jacob that take root that make up the stone that Daniel saw and as the stone is small and the mountain large it shows that the majority will not take hold of the strength of God but will perish while the minority will escape and take root and bring in converts that will fill the face of the earth with fruit what Isaiah calls a vineyard Daniel calls a kingdom the kingdom of God and so the Leviticus called the stone before it comes out of the mountain this association shall be known provisionally as the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists the prophetic offspring of the parent Seventh-day Adventists the Laodicean Church the name Davidian deriving from the name of the king of ancient Israel accrues to this association by reason of its following aspects first it is dedicated to the work of announcing and bringing forth the restoration as predicted in Hosea 1 verse 11 Hosea 3 verse 5 of David's kingdom in antitype upon the throne of which Christ the son of David is to sit second it purports itself to be the first of the first fruits of the living the vanguard from the present-day descendants of those Jews who compose the early Christian church this is God's association is theocratic association this is the stone intestine in the Adventist Church and this is the stone that the Lord is asking his people out there to separate themselves from all encumbrances and join the work separate from sin and sinners it continues this is like a seed the stone in the mountain hidden intestine and the Lord does a surgical operation to remove that stone and we are privileged to be at this place and it would be a dreadful thing if the Lord comes and asks us how we are here and don't have on a wedding garment timely greetings since the old message the judgment for the dead which message is that who brought that message sister who sister white since the old message the message of sister white is out of date as is the message of Noah's flood it is plainly seen that in as much as the denomination as a whole has rejected and is fighting the message of the hour but is still collecting the tithes of the people it is indeed robbing God so you know what this is saying sister white when we come up to the solemn assembly cannot save us again you know Bayesian tidings volume 22 number 2 page 10 the ever-living spirit is the eyes of the church at work first Samuel 9 verse 9 then to be without these spiritual eyes is to try to walk as it were in dense darkness 2 TG 45 page 8 paragraph 2 comment without these spiritual eyes of the church at work we grope stumble and fall and are not able to cope with the all with all the many winds of doctrine and other problems confronting us covid and a myriad of them is left to come where are you going to go in sister white writings or even brother out writings to see the word covid it is the spirit of the message that has to guide us through the living agent and as we get closer to the end 
the problems are going to become worse. And if we're not working as a collective team and understanding that the living spirit of prophecy is guiding the work, we are going to go through the gate. Because this is where we put on the wedding garment. And so, by the time the Lord is ready to take the stone out of the mountain, he has a people that is fully united, seen eye to eye. But sadly, it is always trouble that causes us to have unity. And that should not be the case. Bashan tidings I go back to. Volume 19, number 4, page 6. In this way, the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists are to gather all the saints to the house of God. It is only through the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Association will anybody go to the house of God or go to Jerusalem. Notice carefully that the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists have a base of operations, an association to gather all the saints for the kingdom. You want to go to the kingdom? You have to be here. You're not here? Don't even think you're going to see nobody in the kingdom. Will children be affected by Ezekiel 9? Slay old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Those who have the mark, you know where they are? Right here. Don't go near there. Don't go near them. And so, inspiration says, when God was about to smite the firstborn of Egypt, he commanded the Israelites to gather their children from among the Egyptians into their own dwellings and strike the doorposts with blood and that the destroying angel might see it and pass over their homes. It was a work of parents to gather in their children. This is your work. This is my work. And the work of every mother who believes the truth. The angel is to place a mark on the fore upon the foreheads of all who are separated from sin and sinners, and the destroying angel will follow to slay old and young, both may old and young. And so, God is pleading with us, talking to us, and sometimes we too don't understand the sacredness of the place that we're at. We don't. It has not dawned upon us where, why we're here and where we're at. And so, because the Lord means what he says and says what he means, inspiration tells us, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man up who is in the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Says the prophet, they began at the ancient men which were before the house, and she gives the reference. The work of destruction begins with those who profess to be the spiritual guardians of the people. This is not professors, you know. That is going to be speared. The ones who are speared are the real deal, the bay horses. And so, in closing out with the last point, Inspiration asks, will the destructive work of Ezekiel 9 be a spiritual or literal one? You could not have your spirituality. Somebody's going to church and they're a spiritual individual and the Lord comes along and slay your spirituality. Why would you be a good church person, a spiritual being, and the Lord comes up and slay your spirituality? It is not spiritual. Or if you're trying to be a good spiritual person, the Lord comes and slay your little spirituality and leave you to go on your way and said, well, you were trying to be spiritual, but I've slain it. That is not the case. This is literal. Literal. And inspirations again. And this is Time of Great in volume 2, number 30 now, page 18. Almost similar to what was just read. Since the old message, the message of the judgment of the dead is out of date, as is the message of Noah's flood, it is plainly seen that inasmuch as the denomination as a whole has rejected and is fighting the message of the hour and is still collecting tithes, it is indeed robbing God. And this is what we do not want to happen to us. You know, the Jews in the time of Christ, it seemed that the apostles had override or just thrown away the Old Testament. No more sanctuary service, no more circumcision, 
Now, um, some of the things were replaced by communion and all the other myriads of things that they used to do before. And so it seems that the shepherd had message now of overwritten Sister White's writings. But what the rod has done is to take up what's important and applicable for us. So when the rod is studied, the Bible and Sister White right writings are studied. So we can have a proper guide to our feet. And as we get closer to the end, it is the living spirit of prophecy that we are going to have to ask God to guide us through. Because worse are yet to come than COVID. These plagues, we see seven last plagues. They're not given a name yet, you know. When they're given names, they're not going to be called plagues. They're going to be called by some disease names. And the Lord is going to provide the remedy for them. What will we do? We are going to have to make a decision and know why we're here, for what purpose we're here, and what would the Lord have us to do. And we can't lean on brother or sister, husband, wife, or friend. We have to determine for ourselves that we're going to be saved. And so, Sister White, and I'm closing soon. The Lord reads the heart as an open book. The men who are not connected with God have done many things that after the imagination of their own evil hearts. The Lord declares concerning them, they have turned unto me their back and not the face. Though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not heartened to receive instruction. We are amid the perils of the last days. The time will soon come when the prophecy of Ezekiel 9 will be fulfilled. The prophecy should be carefully studied, for it will be fulfilled to the very letter. To the very letter. And the angel knows our name, our address, our date of birth. The angels know everything about us, and we cannot hide from the destroying angels. And so, the Lord is speaking to all of us to set our house in order. And so, in continuing, inspiration says, Timely Greetings, Volume 1, Number 31, Page A2, Page 9. Study, verse by verse, word for word. Read, stop and think. Do not easily pass by this positive, most urgent truth. For, it, for as it was in the days of the flood, so shall it be now, says the Lord, Matthew 24, 37. The firstborn are first fruits who fail to paint the doorposts with the sacrificial blood in the first exodus, the type, perish. So any of the first fruits of today who fails to comply with the demands of the message for today will certainly perish at the angel's slaughter weapons. And so, as we see the sign of the saints going to sleep, and Sister London was one who died this week, don't take these things light. The Lord is putting his people to rest, that we the living may take heart. And whatever we think in our mind, we should always know that this is a place that the Lord expect us to be dressed properly Christ's righteousness and though we may fail at times determined to be saved and I close with this statement that we read early on the righteous perish it and no man later to heart the merciful men are taken away and none consider that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come in regard to the specific event in question if the questioner will open me shepherd rod volume 1 and carefully restudy page 219 he will clearly see that the context of the statement, those who cannot undergo the trial are laid in their graves, requires that it be fulfilled before Ezekiel 9. Hence, it can only apply to the righteous who die under the turn jail's message up to the purification of the church, fulfilling Isaiah 57 verse 1 and not Revelation 14 verse 13. So, if we live, we're striving. And if the Lord sees fit that we die, we strove before we died. May God bless you. And may at the end of the day, when the roll is called on yonder, we all will be there. God bless you all and God bless Bayshon Hill.